This month we are launching Aux64, a new sub-$10 single board computer, as well as we have news about Star64 and Quartz Pro64 and some new PinePhone Pro developments. This is the video version of the community update, which is more of a summary, so for more info about all these topics, check out the version on the blog. Also thanks to Lucas, Alex, Gammy, Dank12, and MothEnjoyer69 for their contributions to this update. And also check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd, for more open source related topics. Sorry for no update last month, Lucas had a personal situation to deal with in a backlog of Pine64 EU work, and Mark and Tia were both at KDE Academy, so it was decided to push the updates back to the 15th of the month instead of the 28th. Speaking of KDE Academy, Pine64 co-sponsored it for the fifth time this year, and there were various conversations related to Pine64, including a talk on the PinePhone Pro and multiple talks on Plasma Mobile. We have also applied for a stall at Fostum 2023, which has historically been a hallmark event for us, so if we get a stall, we will be bringing some prototype hardware to get feedback, and if you live in Europe, you can travel to Brussels during February 4th and 5th and come down and say hi. And on the off chance that we don't get a stall, we will organize our own meetup independently in Brussels during Fostum dates. Lastly, our quarterly Q&A will be held on November 25th at 8pm UTC, and this is an opportunity to ask questions live, and questions can be submitted through IRC, Matrix, Telegram, and Discord, and it will be streamed live on YouTube and PeerTube. Next up, we have some significant updates for Star64. Much software progress has been achieved, and super quickly too, in only 30 days. For a start, I'm butchering this name, sorry, Aisnaoi Zhang has been credited for getting the Star64 up and running. She is known for work on numerous projects such as the Pine A64, Pinebook, and Pinephone, but earlier this month she took some photos of Star64 booting AOSC Linux, which is a Debian-based distribution for SBCs and embedded devices. Photo shows a 4GB of RAM board running full XFCE on top of kernel 5.15. The GPU does work with the power GPU on the SOC being fully capable. As far as I.O. goes, USB 2.0, PCIe, GPIO, SD card, eMMC, and Gigabit Ethernet already work. However, USB 3.0 doesn't work yet and onboard Wi-Fi has been dropping packets. These developments are only the beginning though because only a handful of key developers have received the board so far. With more devs now receiving the board, we expect to see functionality implemented, and once the functionality is implemented, we'll start inviting partner projects and contributors to port their OSs to the board. And Star64 should be available in November. Speaking of RISC-V single board computers, Aux64 is a single board computer we have designed for a more entry-level price point. It is powered by the BL-808 RISC-V SoC, which is a new chipset from Buffalo Labs. This is the same chip vendor that we used in the microcontrollers for the PineSoul and PineCone, and this SoC features a high-performance 64-bit core and a high-performance 32-bit core, and a low-power RISC-V core. These cores are paired with 64 megabytes of PS RAM and SD card interface and memory management unit to make it capable of running Linux. So we treat the Aux64 as a single board computer rather than a microcontroller, even though it can be used as both. Some other onboard features it includes are Wi-Fi 4 and Bluetooth 5.0, Zigbee connectivity and MIPI-CSI DSI interfaces, as well as an H.264 encoder, MJPEG and JPEG encoders, an audio subsystem, USB 2 on the go, Ethernet and a neural network unit. The USB-C port features OTG and PIP CSI for the camera module as well as an audio out and in interface, although the secondary USB port is power only. The Wi-Fi chip is soldered on and features a UFL connector. We are waiting for the RTOS SDK and getting Linux to run on it will be a community endeavor, but with good documentation and external resources we expect to see initial support for the board to surface soon and development boards have already been shipped to Linux and RTOS developers. The board will be available at $6 for a 16 megabyte flash and no micro SD card slot, with an $8 SKU available with 128 megabytes flash and a micro SD card slot. The $6 SKU is intended for RTOS development while the $8 one is intended for Linux. Both should be available sometime next month. Next up, the Pine Store has begun shipping both the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro on a regular weekly basis from Hong Kong. This means that shipping times have massively been reduced, and both devices are in stock with the current production runs being substantial. We expect the stock to last for the foreseeable future. As for software news, the biggest issues the PinePhone Pro have had are battery drain and lack of camera support. These are not the only problems, but they are the two biggest ones. Starting with kernel 5.19, PinePhone cameras now work under the Megapixels camera app. It has been possible to take photo and video on it already, but not on the user land side through Megapixels. 
You can already try this out if you are running Manjaro by switching to the Unstable software branch. The viewfinder works smoothly and switching between the front and back camera is seamless. But the pictures itself do have a long way to go. There is not yet color correction or post processing and because of this the OG Pine phone still takes better photos despite worse sensors. The other big news is improvements to battery life. Recent pushes to U-Boot not only allow longer suspend times, but a faster wake-up time and more reliable recovery. This is a huge development brought to us from Decimic and Maggie, as well as other contributors, and we hope this U-Boot improvement can make its way into Taubut. Lucas did experience some issues of audio on waking up, so there is more work to be done, but the progress shows promise. There's still a long journey ahead, but we would like to thank all of those making this happen. For other Pinephone related things, Maggie's 6.0 kernel release was huge for the Pinephone and brought loads of fixes and improvements and even additional functionality. So if your distro uses Maggie's kernel, we highly recommend you to upgrade. The next planned kernel release of 6.1 will also include drivers for the Pinephone keyboard, and we've also seen a new modem release with an update to Yakto 4.0.4, support for GSM7, UCS2, and 8-bit data coding schemes, and it fixes the emergency alert system for countries with non-Latin characters. Finally, if you're using Ambox on ArchArm, do keep Keep in mind those packages will be removed in the beginning of 2023, so we recommend migrating to Wadroid soon instead because Wadroid has basically fully replaced it. The last news topic of this month is Court Pro 64. Earlier this year we shipped out many boards to developers and now we're starting to see some really exciting developments. For starters, Debian Stable now boots on the BSP kernel and almost all the critical hardware already works without issues. GNOME 3.38 worked with full hardware acceleration and GLMark 2 ran to completion without any issues. YouTube playback also functions well, and the board was able to set a current world record for the best Geekbench 5 result for the RK3588. While Vulkan doesn't work yet, it already has some solid performance and 3D acceleration tests, and the GP was able to match a dedicated NVIDIA GT750M and GL Mark II. To be clear, there are plenty of bugs and missing features to be worked on. For example, the SD card and PCIe have issues, Wi-Fi, the NPU, and HDMI RX are currently unfunctional, and the SD card fix is the primary focus. But once booting from the SD is fixed, OS images will be made available for testing purposes on GitHub. There are also mainlining efforts being made alongside the quest to get BSP working, and the Quartz Pro 64 can successfully boot a mainline kernel, although with very limited hardware support. But with more community effort and some support from Kalabara, it will only improve from here. The Quartz Pro 64 developments are very exciting because they will not only bring us to a closer and user ready single board computer, but can also open up the future for other Pine64 devices powered by the RK3588. So that's all for this month. Have a good life.